What's good? What's good, beautiful people? Welcome to another dope episode of the Pop Radio right here on the Popcast channel. And of course, I'm not rolling by myself as per usual. I got my partner in crime. Yes. Crime? How are you doing now? Partner? You don't believe I can be a crime partner? <laughs> you don't look like crime on now. I come won't on. lie, I'm the biggest coward. <laughs> like you, I'm, the thing is, I'm an advocate for crime, ne? but then I'm the same person to be like, ah, but what's on Bob? <laughs> So in the same breath, I'm maybe not the guy to call. And that's on Bopper for sure. No, people are talking about police don't do anything. They say just do something wrong. And I say advocate for crime warning. in the same in the sense that I <laughs> some so shy highs. <laughs> but now I'm going to be the first person to snitch. That's the problem. <laughs> and jail won't look good on you at all. You know what I mean? But of course, uh, we're not chilling just by ourselves. Yes. Uh, we do have another amazing, amazing, amazing guest with us, uh, Miss Busi Swa. Yes. yes. How you doing? I'm doing great, man. Her Majesty the Queen. <laughs> the Queen. Is in He's the in the boo, 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 boo. <laughs> <laughs> What's the one chant people hit you with the most when they see you? Is it Her Majesty <laughs> the Queen? <laughs> Kuti <laughs> My it's friend Paga absolutely loves saying that all uh, the time. I love Paga too. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Every single time on our old show, he used to say it all the time. Kuti who? Who was <laughs> saying for anything that's happening that feels like, you know, that it needs air, it needs oxygen, yes. it needs energy. <laughs> so about who? How was the party last night? And I, that's the thing. It, it literally has four meanings. Kuti who? Yeah. It can mean, you know, there's a wind in the air. Yes. It means that I need air yeah. or space. It means, you know, bring the energy. We have one. Yes. <laughs> So please, and I think it's also it's the closer energy that they're connecting on there, you know, because you know, Spaga Nai. He just says, you know, sometimes you just need to speak in 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 sounds and yes. not necessarily in words. Absolutely. And then he found the sound through Miss B here. Absolutely. I, I didn't even have to explain Spaga. So she said she knows him. I was like, okay, <laughs> then you know exactly where he's at with his energy. Mm. But it's been a while since we've heard from you in certain streets. Yeah. <laughs> I know you stay present, <laughs> but uh, how you been? Well, my presence is a gift. Yeah, <laughs> can't just be there. <laughs> No, man, I've been awesome. I think, you know, I've uh, spent a lot of this year um, inside the studio and spending a lot of time with my son, who's now become my bestie, Aww. but he also thinks he's the head of the home. Yes. Of course. Um, so I'm just disciplining that guy. <laughs> How old is he? It's, it's a, he's it's five a, now. It's a thing that, that, that male children grow up with. It's the strangest thing, because I remember when my brother was growing up, and then he got to a phase where he fo- he start, started feeling like he could tell me what to do. Yes. I'm like, I went, <laughs> <laughs> you're my younger brother. You're not my father or my or my boyfriend. So please. Yeah. So it's a male child so thing. So he's always asking me, yeah. um, I'll be like, I'm, I'm going, he calls it, uh, you're going to some seven zin. No. Because <laughs> <laughs> English, but yeah. it's close and there's ambassadors for him somewhere. I go, yeah. And then what time are you going to come back? Is it seventeen far or close? <laughs> and then this again, the transit is far. Is it farther than Mtata? <laughs> is it farther than East London? Is it farther than Durban? Because those are the places he's yeah. been to. So he wants to relate. Okay. So what time are we gonna come back? Okay. No, I think you must come earlier. <laughs> A friend of mine, who know she said to me, I'm panteli sibling. Yes. Zami sibling. La, for daddy. Yo! Give him responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> and is he musically inclined, your son? He loves to dance. Oh, that's yes. awesome. Oh, he loves. I mean, I can't even rehearse with him in like in the house or record with him because we need to first give him time to do his thing, do his thing, and then at the and yeah. then I'll be say say hamba gengo say Okay, guy. So we need to do this now as big people. It's big people now. It's big people time. You had your chance, yeah. and he's always literally just yesterday I was in studio, and he was there saying no, he wants to put something. Mm. So we let him record and then we negotiate after. <laughs> but if we don't let him record at all, oh, so yeah, problem. Yeah. yeah. Have to because give it, is that give and take a little bit? Yes, he <laughs> even knows he goes to the sound card and then he presses it. Hey. I want the volume here. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, but I, I think he's just en- he's just enjoying his environment, he's enjoying his upbringing. And I'm happy about that. And does he fully understand who his mom is? Like in context. Oh, the craziest things are happening now. It's like, yo, uh, uh, it's this age where he's five. He's turning six in January. So now we, we're going, we're at the mall, for example. 
Um, and I typically I typically ignore people, you know, when we're out. But yeah. also people at like Papachinos, you know, the 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 parents places yes. where where parents know yes. that we are taking our kids out. <laughs> yeah, they don't bother anyone, you know, so they won't bother us. But like if we're at the mall, for example, oh no, like, how does everyone know your name? <laughs> <laughs> there at the shop, they were calling your name. Did I zamu pick again? Like because I'll try to confuse me a little bit. They don't. What do you mean? Yeah. Do they, they were calling your name there <laughs> at the shop. How do they know your name? And I'm getting those questions all this this past year. You know, the questions have been, Mama, are you famous? <laughs> <laughs> Mama, are you first? The first one was, Are you Busiswa? Because huh? <laughs> he doesn't <laughs> know. Because he's <laughs> Mama. Yes. <laughs> Oh, and then now, so he's playing all my songs. He's got, he's, he knows how to uh, direct his own YouTube. Yes. So now he's finding songs and he's discovering them. And he's like, oh my gosh. And he's playing them over and over and over and over. And he also expects me to still play them in the car. I'm like, hey, I'm like, 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 i out there for everyone yeah. so he wants to play it for everyone and he wants to like if we meet a group of people in a room like this also do you want to hear a nice song <laughs> <laughs> but it's not ready for people to hear it and then i go uh, yeah, uh, uh kusi he calls me kusi which is my nickname but kusi play easy yeah. play that song yeah play that song <laughs> so easy is the song i'm about to release yeah. but everywhere we go he's trying to play it for someone so i want to see if they like it yeah you know and i'm like no you don't have to do now that now you must be careful because i need to he's on the tablet so he knows how to navigate through you must be careful yes. he doesn't leak it <laughs> he, he actually Tumela. he actually sent himself the song because yeah, we just I got him a, a tablet as well he sent himself the the songs that i knew yeah and now they're playing from his phone so yeah if you don't want you with your phone, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'll play it with my phone. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And he just got a SIM card, so he's also calling everyone. Yes. Um, but also his father is a DJ. Yes. So, you know, he asked me, do you know I have a DJ dad? Yeah. <laughs> when? <laughs> I was like, yo. Let's see, pa, I guess I too. When I won't get a call. I was a figure, I was a child. It sounds like he's just realizing who he is. Yes. Yeah. So, <laughs> it's, like so it's, it's so incredible because yeah. that's definitely what's happening. He's like, he's realizing. Um, who, who like his mom and his dad, you know, yeah. and he's, he knows this is my mom, this is my dad, and this. Is, but also when we were with other people, you know, he's learning new people. Um, I I remember he met my sisters for the first time uh, last year. I was like, you have sisters? <laughs> <laughs> he thought it was just you. You know, I was um with my dad last year as well, and I lost my dad this January. Luckily, Aww. they had they met because I went to Mtata. Yeah. And um, he says to me, "You have a dad." Oh. And I'm like, <laughs> Yeah, I have a dad. But also, it's that age where I'm also now explaining what, yes. you know, death is and yes. stuff. So it's very interesting. I, I love oh, it. Oh, that's crazy. I love that motherhood thing. <laughs> like children. Yes. Please. Baby daddies. No, not so much. Maybe not so much. But it's not crazy. Not so much. You know, now that you're saying that um, you he was born in January, it reminds me, you know, the one person that I always mention, whenever I'm just like, who says that I must stop working because I'm pregnant? Because Ubu Siswa, life drive, <laughs> nine months pregnant, life amp. I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yabola. yeah. I said, Yabola, this is a strong woman who's showing you good see. Rain or shine, is mkaba or numkaba, Siswa no Siswa, we're inside and we're working. That's probably why it's a dancer. Because I, more, I, more and I love it for him, you know, and he was because he was such a good kid in the tummy, you yeah. know, and even with like songs like Midnight Staring, Baso I, I have to, I'm telling him, you, I, you were there in my tummy yes. when you know the songs. Like, Why didn't you take me out? You should have brought me. <laughs> I wanted to dance, but anyway, when he was, when I was pregnant, I was also performing so much, and I performed until like maybe eight months yes. or eight, eight and a half, you know. And every time I performed was when I just got more energy. I get, I got like, it, it was really like when, so when you're pregnant, ne? Mm. everything, it gravity ends are extra. <laughs> so we are seeing that. Yeah. So, 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 so,
beauty. Oh, no. So when, you know, when you're doing energetic things and you're dancing, and this was my doctor's advice as well, that keep on doing what you do and, you know, you, it should be even, you know, um, better for, for the birth process. Because yeah. exercise. Mm, yeah. And the, uh, the last performance I did, I remember... Um, we had a show that was at a lodge, but it was a festival. So there's rooms, but there's also like a big empty space. But then they just put they put the stage directly next to a room, so that I could have somewhere to rest, <laughs> literally to say today. before and after. So yeah. I went to that show. I knew it would say, "Okay, I'm heavy now." Yeah, yeah, but I'm going any day now. Any day now is about to pop. <laughs> <laughs> so I went to the show. And then I slept and everybody's partying like right outside. And then when it was my turn to perform, I performed and I had so much fun. It was oh. such a great crowd as well. But I remember after that show, I said, guys, I'm calling it a eh? cut. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is the last <laughs> one. So he, it, he was such a pleasant pregnancy that yeah. even when it was time, I was like, yeah, bona no. <laughs> yeah. Take me home ne? and don't take me back out <laughs> until yeah. this guy makes an appearance. Because yeah. I was like, I, I also felt it. But, yeah. you know, but before that, I had felt, you know, energetic. It was so pleasant for me to be able to perform pregnant because it feels so good. Like, literally, it feels so good the kicks change and everything you know it's, yeah. it's the most beautiful thing so that's why i'm like oh pregnancy you know, it's fine but you know yeah, I, won't do this, I won't do that again <laughs> do the other part again yeah now um i know pregnancy i mean out uh or having a child rather outside of the responsibility of it as an artist do you think that it's changed you in any way um i mean i think uh, and I'm, I'm always making jokes about this with my team that like so when you're an artist you have a different boss like every weekend mm. yeah. sometimes three different bosses or four different bosses every day right so you're dealing with promoters you're dealing with like a lot of energies from a lot of different places um, and uh, you know I've had an incident where for example someone was like someone had taken money on my behalf um, without my you know knowledge or consent right, right. and then what these um, club owners did was that they followed me to another club because I was, you know, there was a lineup, yeah. and they went to this other club, and they came to me, and they said, yeah, but you're on our lineup, you're performing, that's where you're going now. Wow. And I'm like, no, what? I'm not going there. And they said, no, 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 you are going there. And then I was like, okay, before we carry on, I'm sorry, let's just, let's just step outside and talk about this properly. And then we are talking, and we are talking, and, you know, he shows me that he has a gun as well. I so I'm like, no, let's go and stand over there. I, I, we're in the public parking lot. I'm like, let's go that side so that if you shoot me, <laughs> you should be where the camera is. is can yes. see us so we can do the. But I'm not going with you. You think now that you have a gun, yes. or as well, even if because now we we established that the money was gone. Yeah. We established that part. Yeah. There's a third party that took money yeah. and I'm like even if you take out this money and you give me this money now I can't go with you now because yes. I might die so shoot me here shoot me now <laughs> and I'm always saying to to, to to people like to my friends Uba I can now that I have a son I would never have done something like that like I would not be that you know yeah. right. so Oh, a lot of the time I felt like okay anything can happen it can go down if yeah but <laughs> but now now i'm like ah, 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 ah. calm guys yes. calm down let's talk about this yeah because you've got somebody else to think about now it's yeah. not just yourself because that's the thing like we all get we all get brazen especially when you're out there as an artist yes. because you have you to have feel to like fight. you have to fight because promoters will, will will cheat you promoters will also pull out cans and they'll and they'll act like you belong to them because they've given money yes. to somebody yes. of course. um the streets are dangerous you're in the middle of the night you always have to have yes. like a thick skin to be out there so i completely get it good there's some things where you sit back you're like i can't believe i just did that yes <laughs> exactly hey but now i'm like listen listen you know um so no one must die ne? <laughs> first and foremost <laughs> i can listen i can meet you halfway yeah. here let's even talk if I'm about it the, yeah even if i'm not in the wrong yeah. you know um, i don't think he's changed the messages so much yeah. because i think my whole thing with motherhood was also like um i don't want to sit when he's 15 or 21 or whatever age i don't want to sit and go i wish i did that because or i wish i went there because mm. so i'm um, i'm trying as much as possible to 
you know, still do all the things and say all the things I wanna say. Yeah. And from Fezin Sula and Yeah. Because I enjoy my life and yeah. I, I feel really blessed to be able to do what I love for money. Yes. So I, I don't want, you know, um him to ever be a reason for any kind of like oppression I I felt mm. at any point or restriction. You know what I mean? So I have a strong support system and I and I use it. And this is the other things, like as an artist, you know, um, I, I've always been this kind of person who, um, I got it all together. Don't worry, I got this. Don't worry, we good. Yeah. Don't worry, we, you know, now I'm like, if you're like, oh, I must babysit something. Nini. <laughs> <laughs> what no, time? Why, why don't you do some babysit? So, that's the right. <laughs> and I will, you know, I will always accept help. Yeah. And when people offer, you know, I literally always, and I enjoy also him being with other people because yeah. he's, he's an only child. But so they do say it takes a village. You know? Eh, eh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So okay, everyone who's offering help, I'm like, I'm here for it. Yeah, please. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you seem so grounded in, um, you know, the relationships you have, the family that you have. I mean, mentioning your father, mentioning your sisters. Obviously, coming from Tata, it's not necessarily a town where a lot of people know, Guti, okay, uh, from here you can make it as a big star. Mm. So take us back a little bit to kind of your, your, your childhood and growing up. Um, obviously, you know, I know how black parents are. It's always, okay, you're going to go to school, you're going to be a lawyer, you're going to be mm, a doctor, mm, you're going mm. to be a this. Um, but then you come out and you're a poet and you want to be a creative. Mm. How was that received in your family life and you growing up? I mean, I didn't tell anyone. I think that <laughs> helped. <laughs> I'm doing this I was just like, <laughs> and and um, because I stayed in Umtata for maybe um, my primary school years, and then I went to Durban in high school. And that's why I always say, you know, Durban is a city where you know I learned to be a woman. I learned to stand on my own too. Um, and that's where I met, you know, poets who actually perform. Yeah. Before I was just writing for my own, you know, gratification. But I was like, okay, you can perform it. <laughs> oh, you can structure. Oh, can, huh? you can be on stage. He poet, <laughs> Lena. He prose, Lena. He essay, Lena. He article, Lena. Oh my God, I'm useful. Yes. You know what? I, yo, I'm here. You know. And so when I, even when I started performing, it was like um, my first check uh, that I got was for like, like I think 1,700 or something from a poetry gig, and I was like, and then I can get. Paid. <laughs> oh, geez, I'm here. I'm living here. <laughs> but at the time, I was living with my half, uh, my stepmom, and you know, my my father. Uh, yeah, and my half siblings. Yeah. Long story, but uh, I didn't tell anyone at home, which is my grandmother and my mother, the people who raised me. I yeah. didn't tell anyone, but because it was also a hobby, it was a side of thing. Of course, yeah. Mm. I was studying. I was in high school in Durban, and then I went to UKZN. Uh, I I took up law. I dropped out i took a pcom i got dropped out <laughs> by <What>? nasfas then got out of my to be fair, you tried yeah. twice. Yeah, Tiff. <laughs> so is it when the second time when <laughs> nasfas decided also not to participate yeah i was like <laughs> sorry what <laughs> I mean, <laughs> don't you think that was also divine intervention in some way or another? Because, you know, sometimes things happen to us in life and you get disappointed because now you've been excluded by someone like Nesfos. But yeah. then you think back to it and you're like, if they didn't exclude me, I don't know if I would be here right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't, I, I mean, I don't, I'm still mad about that. I okay. won't lie. I, I'm, I'm pissed. Yeah. I'm just like, really? It should not have happened. Yeah. I, I had one more year yeah. and you guys, you know, come on and I just lost my mom, I lost my brother and I'm trying here, yeah, you know, I'm upset about it. So yeah. I'm not even, I, I don't, there's a lot of things that I, I put into the divine intervention category. It's not that one. Okay. <laughs> that one was just unfair, bro. Yeah. That was just economic indicator. Yeah. I understand. It was just like life showing me that yeah. yeah. And then to take over the world yeah. somehow. You Do you know? feel like, because you're saying that you It was not one fair, more, that's what I'm yeah. saying, yeah. Absolutely. Do you feel like because you had one more year left on it, that it's something that you'd still think of going back to finish? Yes. Oh, uh, really? Yes. And we, this is the BCOM? Yes. And when do you think I actually it? enjoyed it too. And I'm like, but, you know, I, I tried, so I tried again. Um... 
when I had uh, after we did the song, my name is and it's blown up, and you know, yeah. we, I'm working now, I'm getting gigs, and I'm like, I have the money, I don't yeah. need bloody nas for yeah. us. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, you know, I wanted to, and then that year I got so hectic by December, everything changed. Yeah. So I was like, of you know, I was in a completely different space. So I think though now, I um, you know, I definitely, I literally was applying last week. Oh wow! So I, I do want to, yeah. yeah. Is I that a personal thing? thing? Like I know people have different uh, views of education. You mm. just want to complete something that you started. Yes. Um, that you had promised yourself. I'm just annoyed. Other people. Uba. Yeah. Especially because you, f- you feel like you know you can I want to bang and I can <laughs> so um it is that um but also you know I did notice even you know my first two years did make me feel like I have a different world view because of certain um information yeah so I feel like knowledge just um, encourages wisdom yeah so uh, you know the way that courses are set up is like there's a certain you know structure a way to think of things a way to do things i've also realized that um i definitely like at some point in life want to be you know in in business in politics um at the un you know what i mean and i want to be knowledgeable i want to be i genuinely want knowledge i think i think that's also just an awesome thing for you to kind of you know sit back and say it's important in your life for so that you can also kind of um protect your trajectory on how you kind of grow yeah. because um, whether we like it or not as artists we have to admit that at some point there's an expiry date to this coolness mm. you know what I mean mm. it might not be today it might not be in five years time but at some point you won't have the energy your knees are going to lock at some mm. point when you go, when you try and wash and I'll pull you over in the regular club in the 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 club you know what I mean you know what I mean you know what I mean no I don't want to do that so you want to you want to grow your yourself to yeah. find yourself in spaces where you're still impactful even though you're not in the yes, club. Yes, then that's the thing. You, you want to still make an impact wherever yes. you go. So you don't I personally, you know, don't want to um feel like imposter syndrome and the chica could mind Yes. Did I have to take please? But also but also just as a um you know for your son to also look to to be like, oh my mom as much as she was an artist, she's still, you know, a learned person. Yeah. She did this and I this. don't know I don't know about that part so much. I haven't mm. given that part so much thought. Yeah. I'm just grateful that like I I have a life where I feel like my son can be anything he wants, yes. you know. So Y- y- you know i know that a, a lot of these pressures um definitely kill a lot of young people mm. you know a lot of a lot of people that are in university are studying courses they don't want to study yes. Yes. so i don't think that's progressive so i'm just like for me and then if i'm the best me i can only be mm. grateful you know the boy do you feel like part of um just stay on the topic of education uh but do you think part of the fact that the music industry is such a such a rogue club you know what i'm saying like artists you're just speaking about yeah. somebody coming in and intercepting and getting money uh behind your back through your name and many of the stories that we know whether it's contracts or uh, artists getting screwed out of deals mm. do you feel like a big part of it maybe in the entertainment st- uh, industry in general is the that no. fact that ed- do you think education has anything to do with no. that or lack of knowledge of what people are up to no. be so yeah people are just immoral yeah if pe- if people have a chance to screw you over they're going to screw you over yeah. no matter how educated you are you know what i mean yeah. the 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 reason i think this is so prevalent in the entertainment industry actually if you ask me that question is mm. well, government is not putting any labor laws in place it's literally the only industry where you can write anything you want in the contract yeah. as long as i've signed this contract it's done it, then uh, i'm committed mm. you know every other you know job every other industry every other there is a law that if people are working for um eight hours they must lunch for an hour mm. they must have holidays they must you know what i mean there's a minimum wage mm. there's no minimum wage in the industry you know and what i mean and there's unions in other industries. and there's unions mm. there's no unions because because there's no it doesn't even if we were to unite mm. and you know as artists and say okay <laughs> we're uniting yeah. but there's no um there's no reprisal it's like what will happen to anyone who does you wrong yeah because there's no law 
that says they can't make you sign a 10 year contract yeah. there is no law in place like it's it's and and it's ridiculous at this point it's like it's just that it's ignored as yeah. an industry mm. so i think it's political more than you know education i hear you and when you speak about uh, not going back to school and hopefully using that to enter other avenues like yeah. when you speak about the un do you think that uh pushing an agenda of artists is something that you'd focus on definitely. in your future when, yeah. it's not, when it's not about the music anymore. Definitely. I mean, we see it happen all the time here with Abu, you know, MB, what's what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and young artists are exploited all the time. But also, big artists, yes. Taylor Swift is in yeah. court and this yeah. one is... So it's not like, you know, it, it's not a small issue, mm. but it's a serious issue for us because when one artist you know makes it they can take you know like five families out of poverty yeah yes but because there's a greedy label and so i'm very passionate about that it really it like it it, it annoys me to the core so definitely it's something that i would want to make an impact in like it's a field i would yeah. definitely want to yeah do you think do you think as artists we also need to kind of i mean obviously it's difficult to say okay let's unite and let's create a union because everybody is for themselves in the entertainment industry yes but do you think that there's ways that we can structure do you think there's there's ways that you think like even one simple thing that government could kind of do to make things easier for us or to to enrich us in a in a in a way where we can still have a leg to stand on to fight against labels and things like that. Yes, I mean mm. I, I once heard a politician say, uh, the 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 Ministry of Arts and Culture is where you get thrown when you know they don't take you seriously mm. in the government. In the, yeah, yeah, and I'm like, sorry, what exactly? Do you know how much? Do you know how much we s represent our country? Do you it's know how much money we make for ourselves? Do you know how many black youth are busy at the clubs DJing with like from zero equipment and yeah. they manage to like pull themselves out of poverty, yeah. which is our biggest problem. Like, do you know that if you were to empower those people, you don't even have to do much. Mm. Literally, if if you just take them seriously, if you just so it it, it really annoys me. So I don't want to get worked up, guys. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> no, it's alright. <laughs> but it's frustrating because they're the same people who book us when they want to campaign. So yes. we're good enough for campaign. They understand influence yeah. when you know yes. campaigning is yes. involved, but they don't. You know. So I definitely think you know um, if we were to unite. Um, just to hold government accountable yeah. and then create, you know, spaces for ourselves. But I do believe that thing that, you know, someone needs to start it. I mean, yeah. someone, Steve Biko had to talk about black consciousness yeah. for it to be like a long living concept, you know. So someone needs to start it. Someone needs to do it. So the problem is that whatever gig you are not going to take Miss Cosmo, please trust me. <laughs> there is a female. There's somebody there waiting. Is a, hey, <laughs> listen, she's ready there. Yeah. And it doesn't matter. We'll see. When I watch you, where your concerns or yes. complaints, whether it was safety, you know, because there's literally a thing about safety at gigs. There's there's money, not just the payments, but there's also teams that you work with. You can't be, a, you go with people, yeah. and you take other people with you on your journey, you know, on your entertainment journey. So there's a lot to consider, and if we can just unite for that. Also, organizations like Samro, yeah, you know, for for me, it's like you know, they'll they'll they they're always saying. You know, artists don't come to meetings. I say, yeah, because... And then what's going to change? Exactly, nothing. So just because I was at the meeting... what The one thing they know how to do is send emails. But whether anything else is yes. working is a different conversation. Yeah, Because they can so spam now, your email. Yeah. Yes. You? So I think that's where we can be yeah. powerful as like the artists who are working in mm. the industry every day and all day. And that's what they do. Like if you're not on your radio show, you're here. You know, yeah. if you're not here, you're at the club showing up, you're showing up, you're showing up. So those people that are working at it every day and, you know, for themselves and for their teams and for their crews and for the companies that they work for, you know, the one thing we can do is hold such organizations accountable like the Department of Arts and Culture, yeah. you know, SAMRO, RISA, yeah. you know, where it's like, you know, it's the recording industry of South Africa, just in case you didn't know. <laughs> 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 and they, for example, we never have charts. Yes. Why not? Exactly. So why... What are you doing? Why don't we have charts? Why, why don't we know? And they only appear once a year for the summer. For the summers. And it's even they train. pay no one and for. They don't pay. The by the way, time. 
They and but that they ask artists to come for at their own expense. Yes. Even your plus one ticket, if you're nominated at the service, yeah. you'll buy your own partner. You'll buy Wendy's ticket. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine. So I saw you talking about the about what happens if you know, they do these award shows. I mean, that's why they're not taken seriously by yes, artists. Yes, they're not taken seriously. Every single year, yes. artists are, are and asked do you know to what come. I think they do? Yeah. That's why they will always get like new artists yes. too, because they will be excited. Yeah. Of course, it was prestigious at some point. Yep. Yes. You know, we remember those times when Mendoza was winning Summers, yeah. Fasi, and then or oh, oh, when you know Spikiri was winning the. You know, yeah. it was legendary. It was iconic, but now it's like you're you like you're not taking anybody seriously at all. It's ridiculous. It's pathetic to the point where, you know, even an artist who is performing on their stage, you may or may not even get a room to sleep in. I mean, and if you do, and you're busy hosting, you want to host summers at Sun City, yeah. Yeah. but we must drive there. <laughs> and how am I going to get there? Because it's petrol to get to Sun City. Absolutely. You see? You and will? they... Th- they just d- have taken so much advantage of the fact that artists want to be a part of this mm. because it has m- maintained some level of prestige in the country, but they are not willing to meet anybody halfway. Those are things I think artists yes. can get together and be like, guys. But you know, really? but I think that I think the problem comes in exactly with what you just mentioned in the sense that yes, as artists, as as established artists, we are the ones sitting back and saying, no, we deserve better. We need this. We need that. Mm. But because we're the ones complaining and we're sitting back, we're like, I saw it in the end. There's yeah. another person who's saying, ah, well, oh, I'm ready. Oh, there's always a new person. Yeah, <laughs> and that's and why it will never change because yes. the new kids are that's never going to That's where we can no. actually do better because we we even owe like our kids. You know what I mean? Mm. It's like if they want to join this industry, they must come through to to something better than yeah. you know where we have to be you know and that's like it's human nature to want better yeah. for the next generation but also we're not having those conversations we're not getting together and saying okay guys yeah there's a very very big problem mm. and the thing of taking advantage of new artists i mean it's the easiest way to make it seem like everything is all right yes. it's just dressing like whether it's the summers or anything else mm. where it's happening as long as because New artists are always usually the most talk, spoken about. They're hot in the streets. They're playing on the airways, whatever. So they're the ones who feel like they're at the forefront, even though the music industry isn't built that way. You mm. know what I'm saying? You guys, are, uh, you're, you've existed for a long time and artists before you and such and such. Mm. So the new guys are the ones with the least information, but yeah. they feel like they have to be, you know, the they most They have action. to show up. Yeah. yeah. If I'm a new artist and Busiso is telling me, Sipo, I'm telling you, the summers, they're not going to do ABC for you. I'm like, yeah, but you used to be at the summers and you're having a yeah, good time. Yeah, when are you now went today, to go? <laughs> you're seeing me, they're now inviting you, me. Yeah. You're saying, no, Sipo, don't go and be the headliner. Yeah. <laughs> I promise you, it won't be worth it. But then I come back tomorrow, I'm like, oh, okay, now I see exactly what you're talking about. Mm. Because that's what all artists do. And uh, nobody s- says something in the time. Yeah. It's all as time passes. And yes. then three years from now, then the artist who was performing is like, I hear exactly what you were saying. You yes. Know what I'm saying? So I guess, yeah, you're right. I don't know how it starts and how artists actually come together. They do. For a common cause, <laughs> but something needs to happen. No, they don't. Yeah. I mean, when was the last time? I, I, you know, artists will come together for you know their friends, you know, for people that they care about, and it's understandable, you yeah. know. But we don't talk about common causes like not nearly enough. Yeah, like things that we're all passionate about and things that we all know need to happen. We can't. But it's tricky because you know then there's causes and there's things that happen, and now we're in the age of social media where we'll all be complaining about something on social media or we'll say something or whatever. Maybe yeah. we'll feel like we've got a unified voice because something has happened in government or something is happening in the world. But then we're in the same space where people are telling us, hi, shut up, when you're an artist. Yeah, yeah. You're not allowed to have an opinion. Yeah. So it's like, at what point am I, able, am I able and it's to very, And it's very frustrating. You know, yeah. this idea that artists must not have, a, especially, it's it's only when people don't like what you're saying. Yeah. Then they say, hi, when you talk too much. Yeah. Yeah. Please just go and vote yeah, and keep quiet. And dismiss, yeah. <laughs> so it's it's dismissive and it, it's very discouraging yeah. because then you feel like, why on earth should I even you know try? Should I even bother? Mm. And at the same time, I mean, I'll you know, I I I will say something like this in time about the service. Next thing, maybe Risa is mad at me, <laughs> and course. then they will show me the individual. <laughs> maybe you know it's what I mean. Easy to target one person. Uh, yes. So that's like there's a lot of things that discourage that as well. And also remember, you know, fame is different for different people. Different yeah. people are at different levels of fame and are experiencing fame in different ways. Yeah. So abanye abantu ba tumba 
ufunu kuba close to yena mm. if you know what i mean uh-huh. so you know some people when they, you know they get famous and they don't want to discuss with you please yeah you know? and then you know the 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 few people that are willing it's just never enough galvanization mm. to make anything actually change you know you you also go through a lot of stuff especially because you you've been in this industry for a long time you've experienced a lot of things you you can tell now guti okay this is frustrating as an artist this is frustrating as an artist i've been through this i've been through that there's good and there's bad one thing you've also i've i've appreciated as for you as an artist is that you've also learned to travel because sometimes south africans don't know how to travel mm. they want to stay here but it's Devon Cape Town Johannesburg Pella mm. but you're like I want to see the world I want to go to Europe you spend a lot of time in Nigeria as well what does that kind of or, or those experiences in traveling kind of taught you about being an artist and how to kind of expand yourself to go into bigger spaces yeah i i think you know there's a le- in traveling there's a lesson for everybody mm. you know understanding that we are all after the same thing mm. we're all just trying to survive we are all like all of humanity you know wants um the same things you know success affluence survival of their themselves and their loved ones and you know you you become kinder to yourself and you become kinder to others that you meet along the way you know because you understand that um at the end of the day we all want the same things and then gengoko some people bazo Kitty crime, <laughs> abanye bazo kitty corruption, <laughs> abanye bazo to hide some things. Yes. So you know what I mean, yeah. But, <laughs> but but what a blessing! I think it's like the highest level of blessing. Yeah. To be able to travel the world doing what you love, mm. and then not pay for it. Yeah. Because it's expensive. <laughs> I also, you know, I love traveling within Africa. I yeah. love it. Like. Kenya, Ghana, Tanzania. I want to go, I want to go and mm. I want to see. And the inequalities are even so huge that it's like you're either you're in the nice part of town or yeah. you're in the slum. Mm. Immediately so. Yeah. You know? So as much and we have we have inequality, you know, mm. but okay, okay. Oh, to do we are chica. Uti, nsa Alex, within five minutes, we'll say sentence it. Yeah. Yeah, but it's there. But it, you realize how much worse it is, you know, in other African countries, especially. Mm. Um, in Europe, racism. <coughs> <laughs> racism, babes. Good old-fashioned racism. Yeah, Good old fashioned. you are just black. <laughs> yeah, you are just black there. Yeah, yeah but before we touch it, yeah. So yeah. every place has its own things. You appreciate your own country more. You appreciate your people more, and you appreciate the struggles that we face more. And I think you become more passionate about like, but irongo lento yoba. In you can be, you know, a, a street hawker raising your child, literally on the street, yeah. right around the corner from Sentinel City. Yeah. I could write konde rongo mm. because tenita road pela up. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you become more, you know, um desultin empathetic, you know, you become more um you you feel harder uh, you know when you see, you know, injustice mm. because you you come to understand uh the human race is all aspires towards the same basic things, you know? Um, we all want to be happy we all want to be loved we all want to be warm when it's winter mm. we all want to swim when it's summer yeah. you know and the ways in which the world like disallows so many from doing these things means that you n- you 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 know you need to be part of something you must have a purpose man mm. come on <laughs> what are you come on what's, huh? what's what are moving? you standing for <laughs> eh? <laughs> and it seems like that's a very core cool part i mean caring a lot about these things not just uh speaking about artists locally and how mm. much you care about people's well-being not mm. just who's the yes, artist and, who's the, yes. and you're speaking about traveling and talking about how much you i mean if i was half the time if i'm speaking to anybody else about traveling i'd be like let me tell you what it's actually like in france my boy <laughs> it's going down you know what yeah, i'm saying and I'm, yeah. of course we're all allowed to experience all the good and all the bad yeah but it seems like a, yeah, something that really pulls you down or, or is a very central part of you is how much you care about other people like who do you think instilled that in you to see you can be, you can just be <laughs> yeah, <it's definitely laughs> my and how has it never left you because at any given time you know the people can tell you things can weigh you down yeah. or do you feel like even earlier on in the show when you're like okay guys i don't 
don't want to get worked up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> I can see that you're passionate about certain things and that you really want to d- speak about them and give them the respect that they yeah. deserve, not just like. Uh, so I'm my grandmother's over. child. Like I'm, I'm, uh, you know, and I was so close with her. Uh, my grandmother was a nurse. And then she became a matron at the general hospital, Yasim Tat. So she's one of those people that everyone in Tata know, knew or was familiar with. Mm. And, you know, there was always, even at home, you know, there was always, uh, like, um, people <laughs> living there, you know? Yeah. So she was, yeah, she was definitely the caregiver that, like, instilled that in me. And I spent a lot of time with her. She was, like, my best friend. So we read... We, we did a lot of things together, like, you know, at home, you know, if she's cooking, I'm there, if she's, you know what I mean? So we we kind of, we, we had this, like, bond where now, as I'm older, there's also so many other things I wish I could ask her, mm. but I definitely know that I'm her child. Yeah. I'm her, you know, I'm like a representative. I even feel like, you know, if I'm getting too rash, <laughs> yeah. she comes back to say, oh, yes. my cool. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> pull it back. <laughs> oh yeah. man, that's amazing. You know, it's nice to kind of take certain things from family members and and the, and and get inspiration from where you kind of grew up. Yeah. But, um, but what actually got you into poetry? Because you know that's not something that everybody gets into. Yeah. You know, because you know, the, the, especially for us, they forced us to write poets yeah. poems in school, and we were yeah. just like, I don't have this thing. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how to write. So, so literally, <laughs> it's my grandmother again. Really? Like, so my grandmother then became a lecturer and she was uh, at a nurse's training college mm. so she was training other nurses she loved to read she loved to write and she made me read and read and read <laughs> and i enjoyed it yeah you know so whenever if you if ever you're a reader you're going to become a writer yeah. that's why i always encourage people guys tell your nieces your nephews your sisters your little brother like tell kids to read yeah it's not as easy now because now physical books are yeah uh, audio <laughs> yeah it's on twins huh? yeah. <laughs> so why should i read the article yeah you know so uh you know it's hard but get get you know when you read you're going to write and you're going to be more comfortable expressing yourself. You're going to be a more articulate person. You're going to become... And if you're a more articulate person, you're a more confident person. Mm-hmm. You're a more expressive person as well. And, um, you know, reading just opens you up to worlds, imaginary worlds. I remember the first novel, the full novel I read, the first one was uh, Little Woman by Louisa M. Alcott. Yeah. And... Even now, there's movies being made about it. I was there's actually about to. Uh, yeah, that's I'm the like one. <laughs> yeah, they made a movie about that. Mm, I remember. Yeah, it was. It's such. I watched a, the movie. Didn't read the book. <laughs> <laughs> that's the new age. I read way. the book. I haven't watched the movie. <laughs> I watched the movie. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So you know, I had this like I imagined this world that these four girls lived in, and you know, as much as it was set in British whatever time. I, you know, I saw myself in these girls yeah. and nothing else can do that like, quite like a book because the movie <laughs> has the director's imagination yes. inside. Yes. Yes. But the book, you use your imagination. Yeah. So reading is, is pivotal and my grandmother was pivotal in making me a reader. Yeah. And everything else I've become has been like subsequent to that. That's amazing. Mm. Do you still write poems? I do. I don't share them now. <laughs> Why? I don't Anybody know because, because the topics the personal it's like <laughs> I mean police is young, but just been done clearly like also it's like journaling for you. Yes. Oh, that's definitely. amazing. Yeah. Do they inspire some of your songs when you're writing yes. these poems? You're like, I'm not gonna share this, but a version of this yes. can work as a song. Yeah, definitely, definitely. When did you realize that your penmanship now in the music industry that, that was really working for you? Because you're very highly respected as a I mean, as far as people calling you even as a lyricist. You know what I'm saying? You find yourself in conversations. <laughs> I do, I do. That was my job. You know, get up. Get up. You find yourself. You know, you get up. You know that, was, that was the year that I was... I was you were on the, the panel. I, was, the I wasn't on the, the panel. The, you? Oh, sorry. I was the mediator. I was the host. <laughs> yes. And yes, you know how much flag I got? Because they were like, how could you, Miss Cosmo, allow that to happen? Yeah. And, and I said, also, I was, I was also like torn because I'm like... Oh, at least if we take a scoop or something, <laughs> Some, the person who brought it up, my name, 
It's, it's also like oh. it's, also, it's also tricking <laughs> and, uh, and I was like guys I have no say I was just getting people's opinions my job was to make sure everybody gets to speak yeah. but then there was a one person who was speaking the whole time yes. of course, and yeah. then he said Busiswa number five yeah it was very bad curation <laughs> you know and <laughs> but also you know guys if I'm if I'm claiming something or aiming for something or working towards something, right? Yeah. And you see my impact and you recognize that, I'm so grateful. Yeah. But it felt like, you know, some kind of gimmick was happening where someone was trying to prove yeah. a point that I can convince you of anything. Mm. And I was just used as a point to prove mm. a point. Absolutely. Now you, you think differently. You know what I mean? I'm not surprised that I, I, you think I'm, I'm a great lyricist. Yeah. yeah, I like that. I like yeah. writing. I, you know, I'm good at it. I believe that. Yeah, I've seen it too. But don't use me, Miss Cosmo. Yeah, as a way to prove that you can sway something. You have influence. You have power. It's like it was. It just felt like an ego trip, and yeah. I was also just like, oh, I would. And it way. Absolutely. And, and, I'm, and I'm sure. And I'm sure you never watched that show before. But yeah. that episode, you no, were like, I watched. I watched that show every yeah. year. I love hip hop. Yeah. You know what I mean. Yeah. I, I I follow that thing as yeah. well. And another thing that it did for me, which was not fair, is like. There are women in hip hop yeah. who are claiming hip hop, working at it, going in, writing yeah. bars on. But I can write, you know, four lines and um, put it on a dance song because I can. Yeah. You know? But if, uh, you know, there's girls putting in bars, bro. If you're checking your. Kuta in Don Lando, the points. The thing is, the criteria. Yeah, oh, the criteria. Hey, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you're checking your criteria, there are women in hip hop yeah. who are there, who are fighting for that genre, who are doing it for that genre every day. Yeah, I'm not one of them. Yeah. So why Usamans are now just to prove my way? Now you can don't don't don't. And it was crazy because the, the previous year, you know, um, Shoma Chozi was also on this yeah. same list, but she was fighting to be on it. Absolutely, yeah. and I was she on that had, panel. And she had <laughs> done hip hop, and she had you know what I mean. She had started there, yeah. and you know what I mean. So and if that's what she's fighting when that's when that's what she wants, you know, give her a recognition. Yeah. But but I that's also why there wasn't noise about it when yeah. she was on. Mm. It was more so like okay, we get it because she knows that she she dabbles in hip hop, mm. whereas you've probably done like one or two features and yeah, that's it and I'm like <laughs> <laughs> well I can take any of these niggas bar for yeah. bar <laughs> but that's not my life yeah. <laughs> I can take you if I want to yeah. but it's like it, it's th that's why it, it was annoying for me because it just felt like someone wanted to prove a point yeah. and you know um, and the worst part was that you know I just got distribution with the orchard and you know it, it was also like oh it's because he's at the orchard and he wants to uh, push his i'm like push me <laughs> <laughs> how bro which cliff how sway <laughs> this is the hill i'm being pushed from this uh, is the hill please uh, i call fair i call right <laughs> but again anyway you know it's one of those things that's like um Born apa, where's that TV shows? I mm. mean, you must check those things, man. Yeah. You know, you must check your people as well and the intention. You know, yeah. what do you, do you want controversy or do you want integrity? Yeah, and it was just controversy. I mean, for mm. con literally for controversy's sake. Now me let the entire country came to stand still and said, "What just happened?" <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like it was literally one of those moments. Where it was like, ah. But for what reason are we even doing this? Yes. But like, oh. it's exactly that. It was just one person controlling the narrative and everybody else just sitting there going, we can't even get a word in. To and try he and like, exhaust. Like, it's, because it's supposed, exactly. He exhausted everybody to the point where they're like, whatever, dog. <laughs> Literally. It <laughs> was at that point where like, let's just wrap this up. because And then I just happened to be the lucky. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and and it's, never, food. <laughs> it's never in history where somebody gets shoved into any yes, sort of category. That's not, out of nowhere. That's not significant. You know, you know that's not special. That's yeah. nice. So you don't find a jazz artist and you're like, you know what, actually, you're not jazz. I'm gonna, today I'm going to call you R&B. It's like, yeah. no, my brother, please. <laughs> I, I do this thing, I do it for real. Whatever, yes. I, wherever you may want to place me, please just make sure that you respect the fact that I'm actually doing this. This is what, this hey, is what and I, I do. Make, and I make my intention clear. And uh, yeah. you know what I mean? So, of course, things are going to be And there's only 10 spots. Yes. Who are doing this work? 
every day. So, you uh, And you just do like, <laughs> no, man. The whole thing just felt. It was just all. Uh, yeah. I get that. Yeah. I get that. Um, but obviously, you know, being in a space like that where now you're being placed in, in places where you don't want to be also kind of um, mentioned or kind of leads to the fact that you need to kind of own your narrative and own your career yes. and own who you are. Um, something that's a, a, a big conversation that we were uh, previously having, but also something that seems to be happening now is that Gala was also doing uh, documentaries yes. uh, for a lot of their artists. Yeah. And a conversation we were having earlier is, do you think it's also kind of good to have those documentaries while the person's still alive to get their flowers? Or do you think it needs to be something that kind of is a conversation that is spoken about when that person has passed? Um, w- and how would you depict yourself in that do- uh, do- documentary as well? Yeah, look, when you, when you, when you, when you die, you die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's over. <laughs> I'll not second chat. Yeah. We are dead now. Mm. So people will talk, yes. you know, about you however they want because you are dead. Mm. So... While you are still alive, you know, mm. I've done, I think I was doing, I was doing another documentary just now yeah. um, for Channel O, um, her story. And uh, it's airing, you know, for Women's Month. Um, yeah. I think it's airing on the first week of September. Yeah. And please, every chance I get, yeah, everything you need to know about me, just ask me, please. Yeah. You know, don't, I don't want anyone to speak on my behalf, like literally over me. You yeah. know what I mean? To tell you, um, yes, I'm telling you, Busiso is a rapper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get it. Yeah. Send you, make sure, man. Like, yeah. you understand? That's not right. Yeah. And that's not fair. But at least in the lab, to yeah. have now these conversations. Mm. Would you so oversee well, your own documentary to kind of place it in timing? Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Definitely. I mean, W- one of the things that I've realized, ne, um, as someone who's like, like a fan of Lebu Matosa, yeah. yeah, there's nothing there, no documentaries, no, no interviews, footage, no, yay, and that is like that blows my mind, you know, because she died at 26, so prolific, yeah. and so you know, present, so fully invested. The music is there, and the albums are there, but. Where's the footage? Where's the stories? Yeah, like she never spoke about it. all the stories that I found. Well, I know about her, like would be things in Zambia I hear at Kalawa, you know, mm. people talking or whatever. Or from yeah. other artists. Yeah, 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 yeah. From like Theo, be like, oh, you know, it was like this and this, you yeah. know. And I appreciate that so much. But like, I'm like, hey, there's nothing. There's nothing. And plus, yeah, you know, when, you, when you're a parent as well, you're like, I also need my son to be the one who's making all of these coins when I'm dead. Because yeah. you, your story will be owned. The one documentary about Miriam McCabe I sits with B- BBC. Imagine. You know, Not the Brenda Fassi one also. Yeah, you know. Mm. So it's it's wild. Every chance I get, like literally every time, you know, a channel, like when I got the reality show, um, I did the docu with, with Can Do, which was... A, well, there was one one special and this one now i'm like it's fine i have other angles mm. <laughs> well, let's talk about it from this angle let's yeah. talk about it because i realize that there's no point in me trying to keep my life private or my you know like i always say to people i know secrets of now everything <laughs> i'm gonna let everything out now yeah. while i'm still here yeah. and it's important for me because then you have more reference. If I say, yeah, but she must not mean. Mm. Okay, it's fine. That's your opinion. But you can watch something yeah. and relate to me in a different way and say, mm, I don't know, you know, if mm. that's mean, but you know what I mean? So everything that you can document, you do, and also we're in the digital age, yeah. so people are documenting you anyway. Yeah. yeah. With this with this one that I was doing now, they were, I was getting friends and family to talk, right? You know, which is like, I haven't done that about me. And um, I realized that so many people have footage like of me on their phones, on their Facebooks, on their archives, on their iCloud. I'm like, what? Jesus, at some point I need to just collect these things yeah. and keep them in the vault for Hosi to get rich. <laughs> <laughs> when I die, in jail, I have straight glow vault. Yeah. I say, okay, <laughs> we're doing million. 10 new documentaries. <laughs> yes. uh, Who yeah. else's story do you think like uh, we need to tell better South Africa? Or is there an artist that you particularly feel like you, outside of label you've mentioned and yeah. you mentioned Mary Makeba? Um, but, but is there somebody else that you Yeah, uh, that definitely you Brenda Farsi. Mm. You know, as someone who has a son... I am fascinated, you know, by 
Bongani Farsi yeah. and how extremely talented he is. Absolutely. But also he wears his heart on his sleeve. So um It's just like his mother. Yes, <laughs> you understand? Yeah. And the stories that you hear about you know Brenda Farsi from people like Unokwazi that mm-hmm. I worked with at Kalawa um worked with Brenda Farsi as well. So the stories of just everyday things that were happening at the time I I realized but no asumbonang mm. you know the fact that I can go on a live and talk about myself she didn't have that. Yeah. So I would really have loved but the little that she did you know she had very powerful things to say Absolutely. about herself. Yeah. She was like I make men cry. Yes. <laughs> I make <laughs> them sing <laughs> you know I, you and i just really like her when you say listen that. i i watch i love the interview so much i watch it so many times i got the book as well madonna of excelsior yes and I, like her quotes you can mm. tell this is a woman who understood herself but because she died in such a tragic way mm. you know her story is so distorted her son is so traumatized i you know think yeah. i can't speak for him um so you know for me as a mom you know that whole story is like so under you know yeah. under told i think yeah man yeah man it's beautiful to kind of see how how people kind of uh, interpret different things and you know you learn different things from other people mm. you learn other uh, different things from your experiences just being in the entertainment industry what do you think is the one thing that you've kind of taken from being somebody in the public eye that you've now learned for yourself that you possibly will even pass on to to your son <sighs> Hmm, that's a very tough question. Mm-hmm. Um you know, it's a tough question because I think it, it's so hard being in the public eye mm. that um I don't most of the time I don't feel like I'm taking lessons from it. Okay. I feel like it's just like I'm struggling through it. You know? Yeah. <laughs> like I'm just trying to survive. Yeah, in like if, if I knew I would have done a sea and hit my face so that <laughs> no one knows who's really behind the bars. So. Yeah. So it's a it's a very tough thing but um I've also I've learned um at least at least uba you can extend grace mm-hmm. at all times the same grace that is extended to you by people who love you who create memories with your songs you know who are kind to you for no reason you know mm-hmm. who are polite you know um I was saying that at the the place I, I i was at before was uh, like uh, i always say to my friends guys if we get hijacked ne, i must speak for all of us because at least maybe they'll know my song and then i'm going <laughs> to talk to <laughs> men to men men to men please <laughs> so there is a lot of grace that's extended for you um, yeah. by people that you don't know and yeah. you'll never know sometimes yeah i appreciate that yeah so i try now but okay even if and khalili ndifunge ne spandi tenge isonga yeah you know i don't want to buy bread Yeah. And the cashiers are like ah. and then I'm like you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know I try now I'm yeah. going so I've become very intentional very conscious of how um I speak to people how I respond um how I greet or not you know don't not greet because yeah. wow, wow problems yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like I've become like very conscious of um even if i'm not in the mood you know saying hi or mm. listening yeah. you know what i mean because i get extended a lot of grace yeah. you know i feel like you know if there's one good thing that comes from being a public figure is that people want to give you gifts you mm. know b- well things um <laughs> it's not gifts because they're not special yeah. you, you must still post it in the story <laughs> <laughs> goodie bag yeah, Eva. yeah. <laughs> so you know but a lot of people will automatically be kind to you for when they meet you yeah. when they see you so um as a person that's something i would like my son yeah. to have is just a, a, a general you know kindness mm. um being polite and always being willing to extend grace to the next person yeah. like for for whatever reason. Do you think you 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 got a lot of grace as well from some of your colleagues and your peers that you kind of worked with? I mean, you've obviously got good relationships with a lot of the artists, maybe the Kalawa guys, but that was obviously you in the same label. Mm. But someone like for instance Prince KB who's worked with you so many times, he kept coming back for a reason. Gracious <laughs> with <laughs> 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 Not you know? really. Uh, you know, uh, I won't lie to you. The the music industry is a dog eats dog. Yeah. The only thing in the music industry you can't argue with it's a certified hit. Yeah. Yes. So you can't we can't be back and forth. Yeah. If I have a hit. Yeah. Ne? 
So people want to work with you because you have a hit. Yeah, 100%. I get that. Okay, so you don't think that lends to grace. It's more so your talent. I, I don't think um, colleagues in the industry are graceful or gracious with each other. You yeah. Know? I don't think so. I think, you know, it's very, like, I think it's very savage, mm. actually. I think, you know, people want to use you. People want to take and take and take, you know, and like... While it's still hot. Yes, mm. as much as possible because... And music industry people will always remind you, yeah, Pella, you won't do this forever. Oh. Yeah. Like you don't tell a teacher that, but they also won't teach forever. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But they always want to remind you yeah. when you're in a good place. But hey, we yeah, we've you. seen artists come and go. Mm. Yeah, artists rise and fall. You're like, well, so do lawyers, but <laughs> <laughs> nobody talks. Nobody about tells it. them that <laughs> they would have done their life's work. Yeah. You know. So yeah, I think the music industry is like full of vultures. I yeah. won't even, I won't even lie. Mm. Now speaking about careers going up and down, I guess a very big up at the time uh, uh, was, uh, of course, your experience with working with Beyonce on mm-hmm. the soundtrack. How was that experience for you? Did it feel? like a big momentous occasion for you mm. or did you just feel like another project where you have to make sure that you just show up as yourself? Yeah, I think initially the session I had to show up as myself. I wanted to make Africans proud, you know. Yeah. I was like, whatever that, you know, they decide to use, I just want it to sound African. Like, I want yeah, I want you to hear it and be like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> but the whole process and everything that has unfolded and now using my verse in her tour, mm. it's really been like, it's felt like kind of like like a, you know, it ke- that song, that collaboration keeps changing my life again and again and again in different ways. You yeah. know, from my first f- um, first class flight was shooting that video, my first trip to LA, uh, so. the meeting her, incredible, life changing, and then now hearing myself back to Blue Ivy. Yay! Hey. Asha, my <laughs> man. <laughs> John, Asha, you stay. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, what a blessing, yeah. right? Like, yeah. so I don't, I feel so blessed. Like, I feel like, what an honor. Wow. I yeah. mean, if there's a gift that keeps on giving, it's that my power song. Yeah. yeah. And and also, um, even lending to, even the Wakanda soundtrack as well, yeah. mm. um, um, and working on that, did, did they just reach out to you after you had done the Beyonce song, or what was that? Yeah, so I think they, 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 they really wanted to get into, to delve into, like, what's happening in piano culture yeah. and youth culture now. So I think there's... They saw um, Sabaweli by myself and Kamon Pela. Mm. And uh, they, I mean, I don't know how they chose, guys. I'm yeah. not, you know, they, they <laughs> chose us. <laughs> Just got an email. All I'm saying <laughs> is we were chosen. Yeah. Answered the call. And the has criteria. I forget go. So we went over to Nigeria and it wasn't just about like, let's get into studio and make these songs real quick. Mm. They wanted to, talk about the culture the movement what's going on now you know what why you know do we think this is related with Guaido you know those kind of topics so they wanted to delve into the music um, more than you know me as an artist and I think when I was there um, there's a a lot of recordings that I just wanted to you know my mind was like okay let me just just put 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 thinking of something put it now yeah leave it here yeah and because we all also we were all the way in nigeria for the black panther sessions and um when when the project came out you know i got like a request and they said yeah we just need you to agree um to let us use these um for and for this amount and i'm like use what (laughs) and they said chance of which ones but why are you speaking separately from, you know? It turns out they have, they've got me backing up Rihanna oh, wow. on the second song that she's on, besides the lead single. So yeah. I'm like, I then. <laughs> as long as the coins were communicating, <laughs> my know? sister. And so um, even that experience was like, for me, wow. And yeah. then when I went to watch the movie, so they used... Niaba's Labo. Did you watch the movie, guys? Yes, I yeah, did. did. First of all. <laughs> you did. Ne? No, I watch movies. The oh. reading is the problem. <laughs> <laughs> so, <clears throat> you know those <clears throat> parts. 
Chu, 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 chu. That's me, guys. Oh, oh wow. wow. Throughout the movie. Wow. Really? Chu, 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 chu. Yeah, that's me, guys. Oh, wow. Puts. And you put. Look at you. And huh? they paid. That's good. Ah, of course. <laughs> they just hit at the movie. No, Jem Lajasha. That's it, Hosi. No more poverty. <laughs> hey, no more poverty. <laughs> <laughs> but also, I think that, you know, Lud- Ludwig, who's the guy who was engineering was just like I sounded different to myself. Yeah. You know when it's like Oh that's you? Hi hi Jim 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 <laughs> Pass you <laughs> Ho um DJ <laughs> It was like I, I I had the most fun. Oh man yeah. I absolutely love it. You've had some uh, dope opinions to share about Bob Piano uh, recently. Um, um, with your uh, new project or new music that you're working on, can we expect to hear that in yes. the new age, Busi? Yes. Uh, yeah, you've been, you've been speaking about... Yeah. The um, answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's the easy answer. No, yeah, well, uh, obviously just lending to what he's what Sipo's talking about, yeah. about um, that a lot of Ama Piano artists are now... Um, putting in a lot of uh, ancestral messaging in the yes. music. Yeah. Uh, do you think that's something you're also going to tap into? And do you think we should have been doing it way before only doing it now? No, I think, you know, w- you remember when Kwaito was prominent, yeah. we needed, uh, like, a release. We needed, you know, um, we needed, uh, we needed to just get out of a repressive state as yeah. young black people, right? And then Gom also served as, you know, a beat that we need to, we, we need to to express by having fun is fine. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not like like before it was always seen frowned upon and mm. Nabo, even Nabo, Lebo Matosa, they experienced that sort of thing. But Gomo was also that like a rebellion of some sort. And um it's interesting to me how a piano is becoming the spiritual um guide of the youth. Yeah. A lot of young people are leaning into their callings, you know, a lot of young people by if they want. A lot of young people are by Pasha, Banindumba, Babega, you know what I mean? Like Matanda Zangamakanjela instead of just Christianity is the only way and then everything else that's that side is bad yes. and it's evil. And it's so a lot of young black people are getting enlightened and it's expressed in the music of the time. And isn't that the job of music yeah. and artists of a time? Spreading a message. Mm. That's so true. Just that's reflecting the, the reflecting the the times that we live in, yes, and it's like a mirror society of uh, what's actually going on, mm, what the youth are actually feeling, because mm. they're the ones who are probably most expressive, most creative. Mm. So whatever it is that they're uh, putting out there is uh, can be seen as something that's uh, as meaningful to the times. Yes, the, it's a reflection of the, the times we're living yeah. in. That's mm. beautiful. Mm. So do you find yourself that you're also kind of adapting to what's happening within the music space now? Because things change. I mean, from yeah. where you were with My Name Is to moving into like a gom sound to moving into piano, do you find yourself kind of, you know, evolving yourself with your new music I mean, now? I I'm definitely trying. <laughs> <laughs> you know what my favorite thing is? Um, I really love South Africa. Yes. And I really love South African dance music. Yeah. And so we're always so ahead. It's always changing so quickly. I really love the kind of innovation that happens in dance music here. So I want, you know, to to also be a part of that, like all the time. Maybe I'll change to chairs later. Yes. But you know what I mean? For yeah. now, I must have in between. Yes. Mm. Yes. And where can we expect some of this new music of yours? Uh, should we hit Hosi up for easy? Or? <laughs> Please. <laughs> <laughs> Just get him on the phone. I need to tell him, tell him, call the number. Save time. We are from the ladder. I'll tell you what's up. Yes, so I'm definitely re- uh, releasing Easy next with DJ Kao. I can't give a date, yeah. you know, because uh, and yes, no. <laughs> but and yes, we are irate. Yeah, yeah, but so well, as soon as the date is out, you know, I'm excited about like the music I'm making now. Nice. I'm happy, yeah. you know. I went through a lot like the past five years since Hosi, you know, came yeah. into this earth, and I've been through a lot. And I've been also, I know a lot of people are saying, "Oh, you quiet, you quiet." I haven't been feeling like making happy music. Mm. I've been making music, you know, and thank God. 
that I can do that all the time. But you know, I'm not. I'm happier. That's so good. I'm thinner. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sh- I was actually about to ask about that. To say, <laughs> no, did I fool you? No, no. But I mean, it's very. Yeah. Per- it's, it's a part to everybody. But just to do, but just to be clear, yeah. mm. it's definitely easy. Is my next single. And it's with DJ Kao, who's from Pochef's from you know, young guys. I'm working with a lot of young um, producers that I enjoy, um, whose sounds I enjoy. And it's definitely, you know, majesty music that nice. is releasing me, you know, all the way. And hopefully releasing other people, you yes. know, in the future. So, yeah. That's amazing, man. I can, you know what? I think a lot of people can also tell that you're much happier now. Um, we can also see that you are glowing a lot more now. And... Um, you know, there's nothing wrong with taking a break. I think that's one thing that yeah. we've, we've always advocated for, especially here on the podcast, is that there's absolutely nothing wrong with understanding that you need a break because as a creative, your bo- your head is also on overdrive. It's yes. like a computer that now says it's time to glimmer. Mm. If it's time to glimmer, it's time to glimmer. Absolutely. And maybe then you reboot yourself a little bit later when you're feeling a little bit better. Mm. So it's nice to see you glowing. It's also nice to see, you know, looking after yourself. <laughs> Tell you. us about your, your fitness journey just a little bit to say. Oh, it's enough fitness journey. <laughs> 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 sugar and papa. Sugar and zamba. There you go. <laughs> I'm still trying. But like literally, you know, I don't like to even give like any weight loss advice because I it's been like five years. So when my son was born, I was at my heaviest. Mm. And you know, and I wasn't happy. Mm. I was literally just performing because my songs are, are, they are popping. Yeah. <laughs> so you know. But um I wasn't happy not I wasn't happy with my body or myself. I just wasn't happy. Mm. You know? The only thing that kept me going was because La Kanya, mm. my baby boy, yeah. you know, I you know, and being a mom has really just like elevated me. I wanna ride bikes with this guy. Yeah. I wanna go hiking with this guy. I don't wanna be that mom who can't yeah. do that. So I've really like been trying a whole lot of different things you know and that's why again i say i don't like to say to people oh you must do this you must do that you know from appetite suppressants to exercise to on and off yoga and and now i'm in now i'm out and then you know a a whole lot of a whole lot of things like now for example at the moment i'll have like you know um i'll I'll, i detox every day Mm. like i'll have like either activated charcoal or detox powder or um you know the those little detox sprays yeah don't don't so i want to actually live like this yes. you know i want to paint it can be on beyonce city man using new york yes <laughs> you understand oh, the first class the yes, body ready <laughs> <laughs> i want to be fit for my son though the most <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful, man. You know what? I don't even think it was necessarily about saying give us tips or whatever, but mm. I think more so it's about how has it changed you and your outlook? Because, you know, sometimes people can be down and out about, oh my God, I need to diet. I need to change my this. I need mm. to change that. But people just get into it because you want to say, I want to be better for myself. I yes. want to feel better. I want to look better. Yeah. And I want to do more, yeah. you know. I want to learn the new dance moves yeah <laughs> like you know i want to be able to feel like my body belongs to me like yeah. i want to be able to feel like if i want us to do this body body you want to learn yeah. hey, when i'm zimba when hey, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 you know what so i don't i like you know being in control of my body because yeah. it's one part of like you know, the holy trinity, yes. your body, your mind, and your soul. Yeah, that's beautiful. Mm. Yeah, man. Absolutely beautiful, man. I'm definitely looking forward to uh, to seeing and hearing more of you uh, on our streets. Yeah. Are you uh, going to be collaborating with a lot more other vocalists yes. on your music as yes, well? Yes, definitely. I definitely am. I think, you know, a lot of my songs, like, people will just remember me. Yeah. Or just, you know. So, man, I just... Be, I, been in studio with Lady Do just now nice. with Mahu just now. Oh, I love so, them both. Eh, yeah. Babel, Akumanti, <laughs> Akumanti. Yeah. So yeah, definitely wanting to work with more people. I also don't feel like I have to uh, think that much. Yeah. Of course. Just Let have me a good give time. someone else who half. Yeah. Now I'll think of this half when yeah. I can think of this half. Yeah. See, born by as the man is doing that one. So I'm enjoying, you know, even being able to make music like that. And um, knowing that the people that I call upon are so willing, so open, mm. you know, and so ready to, to you know, collaborate with me. That's, that's the nicest thing. That's it's awesome. like, it's nice. Because they don't have to. Mm. 
Mm, yeah. They really don't. Mm. Uh, well, silly season is upon us now. You know, mm. we're going into you know summertime, summertime <laughs> springtime. <laughs> Kuba nice. We are letting go of the jackets. We're getting into yes. you know thongs and things. <laughs> um, <laughs> what can we What can we look forward to with regards to um, anything that you're releasing? Is there tours? The music? Well, outside of the single, um, is there anything else that we can you know check you out for? You know what? Um, I'm not sure. Okay. But at the most, you know, I know that there's this documentary. Um, it's coming um, through on Mzansi Magic Music and Channel O. And it's to celebrate Women's Month. Nice. Um, my plan is to, like, be all the way outside. Nice. You know, yes. just be outside. Yeah. I'm doing... A, I know that I'm going... I can't say, yeah. but I'm going <laughs> somewhere. Somewhere, I'm, go, I'm, I'm doing a lot of traveling, like outside of SA, nice. and I'm looking forward to that. I know that I'm going to spend a lot of time, you know, overseas. Although I'm, uh, you know, I miss my boy, but yeah. you know, I gotta do what I gotta do. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to like really raising the flag high this summer for me, you know, which is like. Um, just performing, you know, out yeah. there as much as possible. I think this year I've kind of kept to myself. Yeah. Um, I've been very conscious about resting. I was telling a friend of mine, you know, um, I'm sitting the busy game, even if I'm sitting on the couch watching a soapy. The busy, yeah, please, <laughs> please don't phone don't me. Don't worry, <laughs> Uba, uh -uh, it's not busy enough for you. Yeah. So. I'm like literally in that mode now where nice. I'm just like, I'm changing the gears now. I'm ready to be all the way outside. That's Same cool. over here. Winter's behind mm. us. Uh, silly season is upon us, like Ms. Cosmo just said. And I mean, it's been amazing catching up with you, finding out what you've been doing and what you're about to do. Mm. And I mean, we definitely wish you all the best with it. We'll definitely be watching, supporting, as we always do. Wish you and Kosi all the best. Thank um, you. Maybe you, one of these uh, ad libs that has been put to the <laughs> side might leak, might, come might end up in a track, <laughs> just like your chance uh, <laughs> uh, appearing the places that we uh, did didn't even expect yeah. ourselves but it's amazing it's good to see you in better spirits like Thank you're saying you. good you're feeling happier yeah and it's definitely showing and we hope that uh i mean the world is your oyster again. yeah amen yeah. 100% man thank you so much for joining us Busi. so we really appreciate it keep on glowing keep on shining man thank you we're friend. watching we're watching, we're watching. and of course uh, to you at home thank you for watching please continue to like subscribe comment let us know who you want us to interview and who you can check out on the next pop radio and from us you already know what time it is we easy we are